Lego part number 30104, the chain, 21 links, roughly 16 to 17 studs long, is one solid piece. And the background of how this is injection molded is extremely interesting, and I wanna go over that today. This piece is made in one cycle, one shot on an injection molding machine, and the injection mold to make this probably cost around a quarter of a million dollars to make this, and you can buy them on BrickLink for extremely cheap, and I wanna go in depth and explain how LEGO did it, why they did it the way they did, and just give you guys a little bit of background. I hope you guys learned something, let's get into it. All right guys, I wanna show you guys what the chain link looks like when it's actually modeled up. So this is in a CAD CAM software, and I wanna show you guys why this Lego piece is so fascinating to me. And so first of all, you can see how it's made. So it's basically a giant chain link here. And then you can notice on the inside though, it comes to a direct point. The outside's completely a full rounded edge, but the inside has this point to it. And if we actually come up here and we do what's called a section analysis, we can come right here and look at it. And you can see here, what I'm talking about. So we have a complete point here. This is a 45 degree point, And then we got a full radius right there. So that's what the chain link, just one link looks like. So if I turn that analysis off, you have one link here and then here's two links. So obviously a Lego chain piece is however many links long, you would just link all these together. And that's what the chain piece looks like itself. But what's really interesting is the reason why they designed it this way. Now, if we go ahead and we hide this other chain link. So we're just looking at one right now and we turn on this. So this is supposed to simulate just a basic two-part injection mold. So you have the top or the or this is actually the bottom and then you have the top here. And if I go ahead and do this, you can kind of see the chain piece in that mold there. So just to give you guys a recap, if this is the mold here and we take this for example and we open this up like this, and we take this one and we open it up like the opposite direction there, you can see the part would fall out of the mold and that is just a simple two-part mold. Now, what's more interesting is once we start adding more links, how do you mold this? Because you can't just do a two-part mold. This is what's really interesting to me being in manufacturing. I do injection molding. I'm a machinist. I do all this stuff on a daily basis. This is once again, why there's that sharp edge. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. They use a four part mold. So instead of two parts, they use four parts. Now this significantly increases cost. Now the reason for that I'll get to in a second, but let's go ahead and show you guys this for um, real quick. So let's go ahead and look at the top. So if we go ahead and hide that, you can see we have these four pieces here, just like this and uh, pretty self-explanatory. You can see the chain hasn't moved and we've got like these wedges. And if we go ahead and hide the chain, you can see there's the actual cavity. And how this works is if we turn the chain back on and if we go ahead and move, let's say this piece here and we go ahead and we do this, we move it like that, you can see how this starts to work. So these four pieces have to move all independently of themselves at the same time for this part to be ejected from the mold. Now that's what's really interesting to me because they are able to make as many links as they want in one cycle or one shot. So there's no hand assembly and they're able to get this chain piece that appears to be you know, completely loose and its form but it's just so interesting. And if you, we look closely up under a microscope, there's actually no ejector pin marks on the links themselves. So that's what's even more interesting. So they avoided having ejector pins on the actual chain piece itself, which I'm assuming the only place they have them if we look closely is gonna be on the actual stud piece itself. But it's just so fascinating to me that they able to make this chain piece in one shot or one cycle. Now. Why is this chain piece, why is the video thumbnail, you know, $200,000? Well, normally when you make an injection mold, you make at least multiple cavities, you know, at least two, four, six, sometimes upward to 16, 32. It's always normally an even number. And if you look at a lot of Lego videos, you can see this. Or if you look at Lego injection molds, you can actually see all the different cavities. It's never just one. So just from my knowledge of making injection molds, 
just a single cavity of this mold. So just one chain piece, you know, these chain links, I don't know however many there are on a chain piece, maybe 30 of them. Just that mold alone is probably at least $20,000, if not $40,000. Now, like I said, normally they have more than one cavity for a part. So let's just say it's 10 cavities. That's at least a quarter million dollars just for one mold, just for this one Lego piece. That's what's so crazy to me. And if we go ahead and take a closer look, let me go ahead and hide this for you guys. Actually, I'll undo this and I'll hide this. So this is what the actual gate would look like. So this is how the plastic connects to each link because obviously these two links aren't connected in any way. So you have to individually fill this piece here and then individually fill this piece here. So there would be a lot of gates to each part and we can go ahead and look at that under the microscope and we can actually see that. And that's what's even more crazy is they were able to do this you know, all in one shot. Each one of these little links has its own gate to fill its cavity with plastic. And then they were able to eject it in one shot and make these chain pieces. And what's even more crazy to me is these chain pieces are so cheap on BrickLink. They're literally pennies for this much engineering and it's not really crazy engineering, but it's just a clever way to approach something like this. Someone had to sit down and say, hey, we want a Lego chain piece that looks and functions like this. How do we make it? And how do we make it just in one cycle? So that's what's really cool about this. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you guys want me to make more videos like this, explaining like some really cool, quirky Lego pieces. I, the reason why this one struck out, you know, stuck out to me is I actually saw a video explaining this. I'll put a link in the description about like 15 years ago. And ever since then, I was amazed by Lego's ingenuity and whatnot. They are the leading edge of making precision parts, even though it is a toy. Their methodology to approach injection molding is top tier. Pretty much everybody in the industry uses them as an example. They have some very creative um, approaches and I have some really cool videos in mind talking more about this with other very well-known Lego parts that to me I look at them in a completely different way than some of you guys might because you just don't know and that's what I want to fix I want to show you guys you know for example the Lego torso there's a reason why it's shaped like that and we can go in depth into that there's a couple other parts like that that are so blaringly obvious that it's just once you understand why they're shaped like that, it makes a whole lot more sense. So guys, once again, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys leave a like, comment down below if you guys want me to do more of these, what videos you like to see from me. And other than that, that's gonna do it, guys. All right, guys, peace out.